I am unashamed. What about you? So obviously, uh, for those that are watching, uh, they see you guys in your uh, face paint to know that... Uh, we hurriedly <laughs> got here because when I got to the boat, deer jumped ducks, and then the ducks started working them. So then I had to sit there because the last thing... So you, you started wanted, a series of... The hunt was off, well, and then it was back on, right? So I had both boats, which these are big boats. And so I was going to crank one up, grab the rope of the other, and just, that's redneck towing. <laughs> so you brought, <laughs> did that what you did? Yeah. Yeah, I didn't so, know that. So Jay. I, I was wondering how you got know, to pick Jay up, go back and get no, that. No, no, I, I, I got, that's yeah. a, that was a, to quote a, a legend comedian, that was a get her done moment. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you this, I saw, I saw a duck get up, and I, for a second, tried to stop. And I was like, what am I doing? Yeah. I, I, it's just like trying to stop a barge. Going, <laughs> no, there's no. You can't hunt, <laughs> run a boat, and drag another boat. Yeah, That's just, you, so, you bit off a little more than you could chew there. But I, I made it. And because we were trying to get here at 11, which right. we were late. But we're here. We're here. So, so. so tell me this, because last week we were talking about this whole, you had this, you couldn't motivate. Stone, I guess, and Godwin is who you were aiming for. You gave yeah. a whole speech the day I was hunting about, you know, you would pay five hundred dollars to mm -hmm. anyone who would build this uh, apparatus. It's a contraption. It's There's a contraption. multiple parts. There's a motor. It, it's a. It, Jay invented it. Right. It's unsellable at this point because it would take five hundred dollars just to <laughs> gather up all these parts. But they have them from the wreckage of decoy contraptions. Like this is a graveyard. This it's, place it's is one a one decoy it, with a with a motor on the bottom. He of swims it, around, right? Tied yeah. to a string of decoys behind him. Yeah, and and automatically. Well, don't give them too much details, because you know they may figure out a way to sell this. Yeah. But anyway, we when have you what look, you call a jerk string, which is hand operated, where the operator is in the blind doing this all morning. But it doesn't look natural, really. I mean, ducks don't just jerk back and forth, so it, this thing looks better. Well, from, they from a duck swim. Position. You know, you put swimming decoy. They, they make swimming decoys now. But what the, the, the glory of this particular invention is that it's hands-free. Yeah. So Because when you have to pull a jerk string, you're moving. Well, the number one... And thing. you're trying to stay hidden. Well, I guess yeah. the number two. The number one thing in duck hunting is be where the ducks want to be. Number two, you got to get hit. Because if they see you, these are wild ducks. They're gone. So when you're up there. And it doesn't take much Be emotion. still and you're like. Ah, ah, yeah, you don't want a man. <laughs> so it's, it's hard. This I is hands I free. We're like statues. Right. Not moving at all. Right. So a lot I, of people miss that. They get up and blind. You don't need that. You don't have to worry about that. They're in a hot hole. They're bum, 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 bow, boom, bow. But if you because really that's the number one rule. If you're a place where they're coming, I mean, you can be. Stuck. We're in a place within ten minutes from the blind where we're sitting right here. We're right yeah. over there. Right. You know, take a while to get through the mud and all this stuff and whatever vehicle we're going on. Sometimes swimming, sometimes, but we're close. Yeah. Well, it makes it a lot easier if you're just close. Right. So I. It's not so, a great duck hole. It, it's good. So Jay good came hole. up with this, I guess three or four years ago. But the motor that he was using went out. We right. burned it up. Right. So he had another one here. Well, then that one burned up. So last year we didn't have one because he said they quit making this motor. So we last year was a tough year. <laughs> and it was sure tough because we didn't have that. Right. Because it, it is awesome. So I thought, why don't we try to find – I mean, surely if we can go to the moon – which side? Jace gave him a speech. If he could go to the moon, he's trying to motivate them yeah. with that. And look, then he threw in this. Well, Ash. I went to the moon and so I said, "Hey, that that's not proven." So yeah, I got nobody, off. Nobody's been on the moon. I got off that because I didn't want to go down that road. And then that in a in a size of moon denier. Yep. In a heat of passion, I said. Because in my mind, I thought what I would pay for it. And I said, I tell you what, if y'all get one of those, 
within a week, I'll give you five hundred dollars. They didn't say anything. I noticed. No, they went. But they had. Well, <laughs> they Phil noticed the gleam, <laughs> but I moved. But I didn't notice it because they and didn't say anything. They were they were looking at the floor when you're giving your speech, and when you oh. said five hundred dollars, <laughs> both of them's head come up. I said, "He's got them." <laughs> well, the next day. Yeah. They had a version of it, but Jay had forgotten how he put put it together last time because it had been a few years. Well, I just walked by Godwin who had a saw in his hand. He was working on some yeah. kind so of piece Godwin of stuff. Godwin took over. And, and I walked by there. I said, Godwin, what, you, what are you doing? He said, I get high. <laughs> <laughs> well, here's the controversy now. <laughs> so that's so, why I wanted the update. Well, I waited for them both to be here, but Godwin, yeah, he's like, ah, which means I got stuff to do. So we didn't see him for about three days. I was trying to translate that. And so I waited for a morning. He showed up. Well, he did. Well, so him, I said, y'all come over here. So I handed them five $100 bills. Chris, Chris $100 bills. Chris, $100 bills. And they, and Jay said. This is out of your poker stand. Jay, right? yeah. So, you know, it's. It's not even real it's money. It's not real money. It is, but. <laughs> Ironed it. You know, I possess. I've tried to explain this. There's some of you legalistic people out there who don't get it that it's not gambling if you know you're going to win. So if you go back 25 years and you look at a history, you know I, I possess a certain set of skills that this is productive for for gaining financial sustenance or however you want to put it <laughs> and i always remember somebody said he learned that my old coot that's his dad his dad to this day i'm 74 mm -hmm. i've never played a game of cards your whole life of any kind never. Never. he just so feels off the hook now i did i just looked at people I did playing i said you want to join in here i said no i did learn it from the coot that sired you which yeah. would be your dad because he when i was a little kid and everybody else was going you know when they got home from school and they went you know did what they do. I was in there playing cards with Grandpa. Grandpa. Yeah, I Grandpa. have at least two don't ever do's. Don't ever do. D E D D E. Don't ever D E D. <laughs> don't ever do. Cards, cell phones. Don't fool with them. Yeah. <laughs> or 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 uh, you don't protest either. But I play You're never cards have with a the side. stick. Yeah, with a <laughs> stick, with a whatever you say it on top of it. Walking down the road. Don't do that. The reason I play cards is if I win money. You know, if I, if I ever got to where I was losing, I'd quit playing. That's the difference in me and some of these other people. But I take, so I, I like to be able to say, I'll give you $500 <laughs> if you'll come up with this contraption. So Mot I, motivation. I, yeah. So I give the money to Jay because I thought he designed Did you give the money before the design was. was... Oh, oh, Phil. No, I know. He that. waited till they. If I gave that money, we'd never have it. <laughs> <laughs> no upfront cash. No, because you got to remember when I gave him the speech, I was trying to get him to do it just for the love of duck hunting and being with us. I said, "Y'all bring something to the table. Bring that decoy." That didn't work. So then I be productive at something. I you were, said you were something, appealing to their to I'm their not, inner duck hunting. I'm going to confess right now. I said a few things I shouldn't have. <laughs> that was I didn't say any. You know, I don't use bad language, right. but I did. I went too far, so I'm <laughs> confessing that. Because I said, the reason y'all hadn't come up with anything is because y'all didn't got rich, fat, and lazy. <laughs> yeah, I shouldn't a, have said that. that. Little, that's a little harsh. I shouldn't have said a that. Because God went and said, I ain't rich. <laughs> and I heard that. And Stone said, I ain't fat. <laughs> Jay said, I ain't fat. <laughs> yeah. rich, fat. Now, they both didn't come in on lazy. lazy. <laughs> so I thought, yeah. So I gave him 500 within 24 hours. They had it. Well, I gave it to Jay three days later. God was standing there. But Jay handed it because it, he felt awkward. Because I think my speech had, had cut him to the heart. <laughs> so he said, you keep it. He gave it to Godwin because Godwin had the missing link. Well, that was a nice gesture. Yeah. Well, it was until this morning. Now, we're uh -oh. three days after that. Back. No, Jay was sitting there this morning, and I was... I was bragging on him. I said, boy, it's the best $500 I ever spent. Because what few ducks we saw literally tried, tried to, to make love with that <laughs> contraption. Right. So, I mean, they are just zoning in on it. And uh, he said, you know, he didn't even give me $100. I said, no, wait a minute here. Uh-oh. He said, what do you mean? I said, I'll save that speech for, for a later time. Because <laughs> I done proud beat him once. But he was looking like, what are you talking about? But I was there. He said, you take it. Now, once you give it 
You don't. That's a gift. You don't you start crawl fishing. That's right. You know, y- 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 y'all work out. I-, I didn't care how they divided the money. So I'm going to have to work on how to. <laughs> I mean, if you have any ideas for how to negotiate that deal, because guess what? I want another one. Yep. But <laughs> I, you don't want little bursts of envy and no, and, and no. self um, selfish ambition. That's right. If you give somebody something, you, you give it to them. That's why, I, <clears throat> and that's really, we've talked about this on the podcast before, that's really the heart of giving. It is. Is you never you, when a gift is given, it's given. I mean, you, you don't you that's don't right. ever pull a string. That's right. On, on the thing coming back. I mean, that's just kind of a general. God thing. loves a joyful giver. That's exactly right. So we talk a lot on this podcast about cell phones. I don't know, I don't know why, but they come up almost every no, podcast. We use cell phones. <laughs> well, I know. It's, that's what I'm saying. It's not a big deal to me, but I guess because of dad. But one of our uh, sponsors, Patriot Mobile. Uh, is a service provider, and basically they're a um, conservative Christian company, and so that's kind of their appeal is if you want to know that your cell phone service is in the hands of someone that kind of agrees with your politics, then they're the ones you want to check out. They've got a special until December 19th. Uh, You can get a phone for yourself and someone else, so you get two free phones uh, as well as a free month of service. So it's a good time to check them out. Good time to switch uh, if you've been thinking about it. You go to patriotmobile.com slash Phil, or you can call them in the U.S. 972-PATRIOT. So that's patriotmobile.com slash Phil or 972-PATRIOT. They also have some special deals for veterans and first responders as well. So check these guys out. Free activation if you use the special offer code Phil, patriotmobile.com slash Phil or 972-PATRIOT. Which uh, so so Dad, that's a perfect segue into uh, to our we've got some uh, listener questions that we're going to do today. One of the questions was what's and this is we've gotten this several times, so I want to talk about it here. Is what is the difference between joy and happiness? Because you hear people say, you know, I know God wants me to be happy. You know, I hear yeah. that a lot from but, people. But uh, what does that mean? Well, yeah. that's right. That's, well, let me start with this. Uh, I saw the question, and at this point, we don't know who asked this, but I'm sure that they're probably listening right now. If you're listening right now, what's the difference between joy and happiness? So first thing I did is I just counted them up. I counted up how many times happy is mentioned. How many did you get? In the Bible. I got about 30 times on happy Mm -hmm. and listen, and 240 on joy. Hmm. Just... uh, just a few texts. First Peter one verse eight. First Peter chapter one verse eight. But what would you say before you read it? I mean, what is the? I'm fixing to explain the difference. Oh, okay. The difference here, because she wanted to know the difference between happiness. Yeah, are and, they the same? I was going to make the point though. But, so it depends just off, how you define that. Well, so off the top of your head, you say, well, let's just see what God had the the writers. They wrote down what they wrote down by the power of the Holy Spirit, Peter says, in Second Peter 1. But uh, in uh, 1 Peter 1, starting verse 3, praise be to God, uh, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he's given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade, just think about what you have. He's saying, he's getting ready to show you that you ought to be jumping up and down about this. Joyful, kept in heaven for you who through faith are shielded by God's power until the coming of the salvation in the time that's, uh, that's ready to be revealed in the last days. So, last time. In this you greatly rejoice Though now for a little while you may have had to suffer grief, all kinds of trials, these have come so that your faith of greater worth than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire, may be proved genuine and uh, and may result in praise, glory, and honor. Well, what's weird there, he's saying, be joyful in suffering. Do what? I mean, what's weird about that verse is the first one you read, he's talking about being joyful, though you have trials. That's, and that's correct. Get, get that kind of mindset. 
Philippians 1, verse 25 is a, is a beauty. Uh, I know, consequently of this, I'm cons uh, convinced of this, I know that I will remain and I will continue with all of you for your progress and joy in the faith so that through my being with you, again, your joy in Christ Jesus will overflow on account of time. There's another text that says inexpressible joy and and the difference between joy, if it's inexpressible and so deep, I, I conclude that man-made happiness is one thing. I'm happy because you say, well, I, well, God did mention it. You can be happy. But what he's talking about here is fruit of the Spirit. It's love, number one, and number two is joy. Mm-hmm. Well, since it's fruit of the Spirit, you say, what's the difference? One of them is Spirit-induced, and the other one, you can be happy, happy, happy running around on planet Earth, or thank you, you've got on top of the world, you got everything going, but you don't know Jesus. Yeah. So this is a person who knows Jesus, and she said, what's the difference between me being happy about it and me being joyful? Where they're synonymous words. If you're joyful, you're happy. But yeah, the bottom you line is... That and didn't you invent that phrase, happy, happy, happy? Well, happy, I, happy, happy. <laughs> but my point here is joy is being fruit of the Spirit, which shows you that's a bigger thing than just being happy about what God's done. You mm -hmm. know, inexpressible joy, meaning you can't even put you, you, you're in a safe position. Your past sins are removed. Your future one's not being counted against you. You're guaranteed to be raised from the dead. You have God's Spirit in you, so these qualities like love, joy. It is interesting that happy is not mentioned in that list. Love, joy, peace, mm -hmm. patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. No, no happy, because it's bigger than happy. Right. It's Holy Spirit-induced. That's my answer. It'd be interesting to see what the Greek words Yeah. Like, like I'll give you one. I mean, you, you mentioned 30, which I'm surprised. The only time I know of in the New Testament, so I could be wrong since you had 30 references, where he said something along those lines to me about just your happiness, and I'll read it, is in 1 Timothy 6, in, in the last paragraph, verse 17 says, Command those who are rich in this present world not to be arrogant, nor to put their hope in wealth. Because yep. a lot of people immediately, when you think happy, they think, well, money makes, makes me you happy. happy. That's what I labeled, mean. just my label, man-made happiness. That's, All right. that's but physical he's, But he happiness. is addressing this, and this is one place in the New Testament. I, if there's another one, lay it on me. But where he, ad he addresses this as far as happiness, which I think is the difference in joy, which is what we're saying, you, you know, the joy, before I continue reading this, when I read Hebrews 12, where it says, Jesus, who for the joy set before him, endured the cross, scorning its shame. Well, that His seems, joy is us. Yeah, that seems like an apposition that he could find joy in us on a cross. Right. I mean, that's... Ridiculous, but that's what I think the difference is. It, it's not about how much money I have, or you know, how many women I've been with. You know, because when I was in high school, that was the pursuit of happiness. All my buddies, that's all they talked about. Yeah, let's let's get drunk and let's find a girl. That why? Well, because I, I want to be happy. I want to be happy. And so it's kind of like the woman who gave the two cents, being poor, poor but gave the two pennies and Jesus said, that's what, that's what, that's what I'm looking for right there. Right. She was full of joy and she didn't, ha and she gave well, her she last gave two all cents. she had. So people say, well, that's nonsense. So he, he says, he has this warning to the rich in first Corinthians six. And he says, don't put your hope in wealth, which is so uncertain. That's an interesting way to look at that. It is. But to put their hope in God and here's the phrase that I think addresses happiness, not necessarily joy. 
who richly provides us with everything for our enjoyment. Now, it doesn't say happy, but it is a strange verse because he's basically saying he's, he's giving you things to enjoy. Yep. So now he's it's surrounded by, keep this in perspective because wealth is uncertain and we know there's 200 verses about joy and affliction, suffering, even like what we said about Jesus on the cross. But then he says, command them to do good, to be rich in good deeds, and to be generous and willing to share. So he basically said what we're saying. It's okay that God has provided some things Mm -hmm. for you to enjoy and be happy. However, then he labeled three things that you need to pursue, which is being rich in good deeds, which has nothing to do with money. Because I think he realized what I've realized. You, you'll you get way more happiness out of serving and sacrificing and doing good to others than you would any amount of money that you could buy, you know, a new truck or you think that's going to make you happy, but we've all had new trucks in the last 10 years. I don't think we had one before that because <laughs> no. there was no money. Right. But you realize you have it, and guess what? You you feel good for what? Two or three days? Yeah. Yeah. And, and then that's all that. Yeah. So what, what are you going to do? Go buy another one? It has it, no eternal consequences. Right. Well, and you talked about the the, <clears throat> the words themselves, Jace. Happiness, you think about the, the word hap, the root word of happiness, is circumstance. Like, you know, you hear, some, you hear somebody say a happenstance, you know, like mm-hmm. so it's based on circumstances, and that drives people to happiness or not. You know, right. I mean, my life's going good. I'm happy. My life's going bad. I'm not happy anymore. And so the, I think that's the root difference. The idea of joy, biblical joy, is like you said, or, or I thought about James 1, consider it pure joy whenever you face trials of many kinds. Because yeah. then he goes to describe what that happens, you know. And by the way, I mean, you'd there, have to, that's a mindset. Jace, yeah. and you work with the worship team a lot. It is amazing in the book of Psalms, how many times joy is brought together through song, singing, mm-hmm. singing, joy, joy, singing, joy, singing. All the, the, the psalmist, one right after the oh, other. I agree. Right. Yeah. So, you know, I, I, you know, people can be happy, but most of them don't break out in song over being happy. They're like, Gee. maybe a yippee, about a two yippees. And boy, I, 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 got, I got some money now. I've done, I pull that off. You know, but I believe that's or why. Ath- athletics, you know, and somebody yeah. can run the fastest and football team and all that's, that's all of that. You know, they're happy. They'll turn flip. Look what I just did. I, I, I mossed them all, jumped up and got the ball. <laughs> they're happy. They're happy. Yeah. But, but this kind of. This is a level well, above that. I think the problem is in our culture is the reason the singing industry is so successful. We I mean, just think about it. How many how many tens of millions of dollars? Now, now forget church songs. Just people who sing because it makes people happy. Yeah, and, and I think comedians the same thing. You know, I'll kind of think about sitcoms and we, you know we'll sit here and talk about Seinfeld sometimes yeah. and laugh and. And and that's what's appealing to people. What is not appealing, and the reason I brought this verse up because I did a lesson on this at you know a church one time. Unfortunately, it was just crickets. Yeah, because because <laughs> unfortunately, tough, a lot of times tough crowd. A lot of times, no, I just think they thought, "What are you trying to say?" And, and here's my point. Here's why it was cricket. Some of the most miserable people i've ever been around are people in jesus yeah because they're like well i can't be happy you know there's a joy in me but you know i'm suffering i don't have anything and you know i'm like wait a minute here (laughs) he he does say he provides you can enjoy things in life and i always take up for things that are good clean fun like hunting yeah like metal detecting like card playing. I yep. take up for those things because when I was in high school and all my friends were doing the things that I knew were wrong, it's tough on a kid, and I say a teenager, yep. to have something to do. You know, I played a lot of ball. I mean, 
every kind Stay of ball busy. there is yeah. because I looked at it as something that made me happy. I was born with physical gifts from God. That I was good in yeah. sports. Right. I mean, you know, any sport, athletic is the word I was looking for. So it's okay. But at some point, you got to realize that what he got to was that he said, you know, command to be rich in good deeds, to be generous and willing to share, which was very difficult for me to share and be generous when I didn't have anything. Now, I want to thank my wife for that. She she had that down way more than me. It's like a lot of times when we had no money and the collection plate is coming around, she more than me would say, we're giving, even though we don't have it, which you brought up the, the widow lady. But there is something about that that brings happiness because you're, you're, there's a trust and a reliance that God's going to take care of me and I'm doing the right thing. Guess what? I didn't starve. I mean, no. it happened. So he got to the point, I wanted to read this last part, in this way. So he already said he's provided everything for our enjoyment, but focus on being generous, sharing, doing good to others. In this way, they will lay up treasure for themselves as a firm foundation for the coming age so that day so that they may take hold of the life, and I like this phrase, that is truly life. Mm-hmm. So to me, having putting your happiness in wealth only is not truly life. Right. Being able to enjoy the things God's given you, if he blesses you with you know trucks and money, and you then have to look at that and, and say, I have a responsibility. If you want to have true life, I'm going to have to share this. That that that's where I'm gonna experience. It's gonna leap over from just being like, happy to joy. I like, I like. Hang, hang on, Dan. Let's take a break. Yeah. One of uh, my favorite sponsors uh, is a company called Omega XL. Uh, I hear I hear the ads with other people too. I, I heard yeah. uh, you know O'Reilly doing that the other day. He takes it as well, which anybody should if you got inflammation issues. And most older people like me uh, or Dad or Jace. Uh, have inflammation issues. So basically, that's where pain comes from. You get inflammation in your joints, your bones, you know, things like that. So basically, this uh, this oil that's taken from muscles neutralizes the inflammation. Uh, and I take it. It's fantastic. It works very, very well. So if you want to check them out, it's uh, Omega XL is where you go, dot .com. You, get a, you buy a bottle, you get a second bottle for free uh, because you're a listener to our podcast. So it's omegaxl.com slash fill, or you can give them a call, 800-844-4888. That's 800-844-4888. Check them out. Got inflammation I'm issues? 74. Thumbs up from Phil. No aches and pains. There you go. None. I like James 1, verse 2. He just starts out on the front end of his letter. Consider it pure joy, my brothers. Check this out. Whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith develops perseverance. So first, consider it pure joy when someone... It's kind of like if someone writes me a nasty letter and it gets to me through whatever means, and they say, you might ought to read that. That that may fire you up. And when, I, <laughs> when you know that the trials and people, yeah, 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 you're taking a cursing, James said, consider it pure joy. Be, be happy that you're who you are. Because it your faith, testing of your faith develops perseverance. Joy is a good thing. Because I got joy here and a bunch of trials coming your way. And your faith develops perseverance. Perseverance must finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. If any of you lacks wisdom, he should ask God to give generously to all without finding fault, and it be given to him. But when he asks, he must believe and not doubt, because he who doubts is like a wave of the sea blown and tossed by the wind, in other words, if your litmus test is, but I got up this morning, I really wasn't happy. I'm not just not happy about the way things are going. You're looking at it wrong. You need to say, I've been tested here. See if my face real or not, or if I'm just going through this, the rigors of, <clears throat> of the, uh, for what's the way you call it, the, 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 they go to church and they're bored 
and they leave their board, they're not happy. They're not joyful people. I've spoken to them. Jace has spoken to them. You say, why aren't they ha- Why aren't they the happiest people and the most joyful people on the mm-hmm. planet? Yeah. I mean, immortality, life and immortality, you, you I, I don't know why you wouldn't be jumping up and down I, saying, I think it's well, be, yeah, uh, you're going to get a cussing. And so, so, so what? <laughs> so right. I think it's trying to be ritualistic instead of being inspired by a real living being. And for example, I've gone and spoken at youth rallies before. And before I get up and speak, like the youth pastor get up, there'll be hundreds of kids out there and they'll sing a song. And the last thing I would think is that these people were happy. It it, it just yeah. it's like he's singing. Oh, I'm so poor and everybody's around me is rich and I don't know what I'm gonna do. The brother, he went on to say, Jane, in humble circumstances, you say he's poor as a snake and he's barely making it. In humble circumstances ought to take pride in his high position. <laughs> I mean, you just think of the way the way that reads, you're like he ought to be happy about the fact that he doesn't have a, too much money. He, he's struggling. But the one who's rich should take pride in his low position because he'll pass away like a flower. The sun rises with scorching heat and withers the plant. Its blossom falls and its beauty is destroyed. In the same way, the rich man will fade away even while he goes about his business. Blessed is the man who perseveres under trial because when he stood the test, He'll receive the crown of life that God has promised to those who love him. So you look at that, you know, you say, boy, that's a, to to most people, they would say, that's a strange way of looking at life. Yeah. It, 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 it'll make you joyful. That's what happens. Well, I think people are looking at it from a perspective. When you when I see this question, because I read this verse in 1 Timothy, and in the, in the saying that we don't really focus on, in life, as it said, God who richly provides us with everything for our enjoyment. I think people are looking at it like, they'll ask the question, well, whatever makes you happy. And they're not looking at these things coming from God in their life. They're trying to find something that makes them happy. Why are you there? I'm on record as saying, I didn't read it anywhere. I just thought about it. And I said, the rarest commodity there is on this earth is peace of mind. And I think that's what James and these Bible writers are saying. Be full of joy in the face of things where most people be belly aching and griping and complaining. He said, don't be like that. So well, you got everything to live for it and it's guaranteed. Be thankful that you suffer anything, trials, you have bad times, a good time, just go with the flow and be full of joy because you know you're getting out of here alive. It's it's worth it. Well, it, <clears throat> it's back to that thought you talked about before, Dad, about not being dependent on someone else. That's right. So joy is is comes from a relationship with the Holy Spirit, as you said, that's fruit born out in your life. But I've heard so many people, Lisa and I do a lot of marriage stuff, and they're like, well, you know, she, she just does, I'm not happy. She she doesn't oh, make yeah. me happy. Oh, yeah. Or, he, you know, I mean, God wants me to be happy, and look at the way this. I've heard people tell me that, Al, for 40 years. So but it's always the same thing. I say, look, you're trying to make it dependent on your spouse for you to find joy. You're always going to be in a bind like that. I mean, it's got to come from inward relationship with God. Trust me, you'll be happier people if joy has been born out in your marriage, in your life, yep. no matter what the circumstances are. That's right. I mean, every every marriage, every family has a season of challenge. I mean, that's mm-hmm. we've talked about it many times. I on think the, the word we're looking for is contentment, which if you look it up on a worldly definition, it says a state of happiness and satisfaction. But earlier in 1 Timothy 6, in verse 6, he said, godliness with contentment is great gain. Is great gain. Great gain. So if you're going to be godly, that's a good point, and, and and happy in that. Well, then you say, well, why did he make that statement? Because I think that's really what the biblical word for happiness should be. He then says, for we brought nothing into the world, and we can take nothing out of it. Well, why is he saying that? Because. He's later on going to say, look, I'm giving you things to enjoy. But remember this rule. 
there's nothing here that's right that's gonna provide long term happiness that's right so nothing so that's why it says godliness with contentment, being happy that we're gonna do it God's way, it may not always feel the best or even make By sense. By the way, I raised both of you boys. So y'all came up the ranks. Y'all seen y'all saw the whole thing unfold from catching catfish and buffalo and gasper goo and <laughs> sell them. We were making about two twenty five, two fifty a week, see if we could get the duck call going. Y'all were there before Y'all were there during, and now we're looking back. Did we ever sit around, me, your mother, with y'all, and just sing the blues? We're down and out. I don't know what's happened. You know, where's God? Have, did we ever go through all of this unhappy? I never remember it. I mean, all I remember is just pressing on, and that was the mindset. Let's take another break. So last time I shared uh, this uh, commercial that almost crashed the ScoreMaster website, basically a person can get 97 points added to their credit score. You just got to know how to get there and how to get it done. So ScoreMaster, uh, one of our sponsors, basically they came up with an algorithm that super boosts credit scores, which is helpful for anyone that's buying a car, applying for credit, you know, for the first time, maybe a young couple. So you go to scoremaster.com. And you can be boosted as much as 61 points in 20 days. So it's it's really good. It's going to save you a lot of money if you're, you know, buying a home or, you know, making a home loan or anything like that. Scoremaster.com is where you're going to go slash fill. So go to scoremaster.com slash fill. Figure out how you can boost your points, save you some money on some loans. Well, he, then the next verse, he says in verse 8, but if we have food and clothing, we will be content with that, which I think he was laying the foundation. Like you're saying, we, we didn't have much. But we did have food and clothing. We were focusing on God. And then later on... We ate see, a lot of fish. <laughs> yeah, you see the temptation that comes from having a lot of stuff. To me, it's a little easier when you don't have a lot because you're not having to deal with yeah, that kind of had, That's a good point. Take. No doubt about it. And you have to teach then the next generation. Jason, I've had to do that with our kids and now my grandkids about having too much. And then and then somehow glean in your happiness from that. I, I love the way he closed out Philippians. Paul said to your point, Jay's, I rejoice greatly in the Lord that at last you have renewed your concern for me. Talking about the Philippian church. Indeed. You have been concerned, but you had no opportunity to show it. I am not saying this because I am in need, for I have learned to be content whatever the circumstances. Which that's is that, joy. That, that's joy. That, that Your happiness is not but dependent. See, so he me. said, I know what it is to be in need. I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether I'm well-fed or hungry, living in plenty or in want. I can do everything through him who gives me strength. That's it. Right there. I mean, that's the core, really. I think that's the, the hard... answer to the question of the person who contacted. What's <laughs> think, the difference? I think the Philippians hard part four. is getting practical, though, with it. Because, like, I go back to the dating on what was making my buddies happy and making me miserable. Because I was dating girls. I'm looking at them. They're willing and able for anything I want to do. But I was like, eh. And so it was causing me a lot of discomfort, and I was getting ridiculed. And my point is, at the time, it seemed a lot bigger deal. But you know, I was even though I'd made up my mind to do it God's way. In that moment, it was very difficult because it just—it's just right here. Let's just get it over with. The old let, flesh let, cries out. And so your curiosity nature. to be happy, because they're like, hey, this is the greatest thing. <laughs> I'm just like, nah. See, it was very hard. And I think that's what happens to people. They know these verses. They know the concept. But in the moment, you know, I think about affairs and things. Yep. It, it, it's just so hard to just take a time out and say, no, I'm going to trust God, even though I know this is going to be happy for a little bit because <laughs> it will be sure it's fa- i mean sin is fun i think somebody said that i don't know who but most of it is so that that's where the the problem it's hard to grit your teeth and just say no 
uh, I'm I'm sticking with this plan because I know true joy is going to come later if I do it God's way. That, and if you depend it, that happiness on that one moment, whether it's a, an affair, a moment of weakness, whatever, it's never going to measure up. It's you're going to keep falling short because it's not what God desires. I mean, how many times well, you have know what's you seen interesting? It? He makes a good point that I hadn't thought about it. Maybe that's why, without us even realizing. But I'll have many between just the three of us here, and Willie to two, and Miss Kay working with the women. But all these different people, they're reaching out to us, and they're basically saying, "Can you fix me so I can be happy? Yeah, I can be joyful. I, I'm I'm down in the dumps here. Why would they come to us to try to help them? Because they see it and they want that. For they their think own they. Life. We seem now, happy. My, I, we, it, we seem that's happy. a good point. If we go around <laughs> singing the blues, oh, yeah, yeah, and there's no joy there, who's going to come to you to yeah. say, "Can you help me?" Because I don't feel any joy. But you made a good point. I hadn't thought about that a minute ago. That joyful people, people that find joy in whatever's going on in their lives, tend to be happier people. Uh, I mean, yeah, it it, it really does well, relate. The, so. the definition days. for joy has happiness in it. And the definition for happiness has joy in it. Yeah, because so, uh, I looked it up. Yeah, exactly right. Because the bad days, because we all have bad days. We're not yep. saying we don't. You're saying, I'm going to hang on here because yep. I know God's way is the right way. It's like we're almost cheating because when the temptation comes or or you start thinking, oh, if I had this, I'd be happier. If I had, then you're like, no. I just I got to get through this because I know if I be trust, content with what you have. I, I know if I trust God's way that the joy there is going to bring me happiness, which is why yep. I brought up the thing about marriage because that seems to be the one I get just like you. Yep. The answer on why did you leave your wife and go be with this woman? Because you're looking at this woman. It's not that she can't be saved, but you're just looking at it saying this is not going to work long term. <laughs> Anybody could have done this. You didn't pull off some magical move. I could have gone done. I could have gone and done the same thing because it's it's maybe a woman who's battered, who's had yeah. tough times. There's always reasons. And then all of a sudden, the excitement starts because they're doing something that's wrong. And that's why I said there's a fun element. Fifteen here. minutes of glory. Yeah. <laughs> and then look, how many times have we had these conversations? And then you look up three years down the road. And now they're split up. Right. It's like the same product. Well, I'm like, wait a minute, what happened to this? All I want to be is happy if I could just have this. Well, then you did it, and that didn't make you happy. No. And it, now we have the same speech, and it's like almost a cycle that's hard to break, and they've moved on. Maybe I can get it out of this pill. Clump you. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. It's got, this will make me happy. Well, all you have to do is follow them a little while. All of a sudden, they're singing the blues. They're down in the dumps. Because well, you're depending. I thought you had the pills to get you out of that. Well, and then sores are coming on their face. You're, depend you know what I mean? they're you're getting... depending on something yeah. or someone else for joy, and it's never going to work. I mean, it's got to be internal. It's got to be Holy Spirit. Let's take one last break. So I wanted to relay this to another question in our last segment here, um, which is a person asking about the coronavirus. Basically, the the whole statement was, am I, do I have the wrong motive by praying that this ends? Like, in other words, he's kind of asking the question is you look at this macro big picture of 2020 and it's been tough on a lot of people for a lot of different reasons. And so as a Christian, especially based on us talking about being joyful, how do you deal with praying that God remove something that that maybe it's here for a reason. So that's kind of his question is how do we look at this from a from a, a big viewpoint or a higher viewpoint of what's going on day to day in our country? My and, answer would be a short one on that one. If you know you're a child of the resurrection because you've put your faith in Jesus coming down in flesh, dying on a cross for you, being buried and raised from the dead, if you know you have put your faith in that. You've died to sin. You've been buried in a pool of water, and here you come up. You're sealed with God's Spirit. Coronavirus or no coronavirus? Oh, you've got it beaten already. Right. Whatever, whichever way you go, whether you go early or to physical, you experience the separation from the tent, as Peter called it. You're separated from your tent. You're your this body, and you go on to be with God. He's coming back. He'll give you a new body. 
Right. It, it'll last forever. If you know that, I don't know what what the big worry is about what man can do to you or what a virus can do to you. Yeah, I think people try to, the reason they ask these questions is because trying to assess blame and, one, you know, why is this happening? You know, you, you go back to Job, which I think is the oldest book written. The very old, ancient. And, yeah, and, I mean, you had a conversation among God and the in the evil world where they allow or God allows this scourge to happen, you know, to Joe, which seems, you know, a little bit, it makes us feel uncomfortable, but I think if but it's you, really James one, I mean, right. Well, I mean, right. Yeah. Because what <laughs> I mean, we, what we view as problem, like big major problems of life. Well, to God, they're not a problem. And so we get all bent out of shape. Like, you know, when you when you take the innocent dying or something happens to a kid, I mean, if God is eternal, if you really believe God is true and real, this kid is not dead. That is correct. That they're, they will live forever in... That is correct. But it, people say, ah, because they're inserting themselves as God, and they say, well, I wouldn't do this because they're here well, for a limited time. Well, how old would time. they be? How old would they be? And I'm like... All I know for sure is I don't know how old we're going to be. All I know for sure is it's not much of a question if you are outside of time and you're going to live forever. You're not worried about what age you are. That's the last thing you worry about. That's right. I think the key point is when Jesus prayed, all those we little children that, ripped out of the womb, right. they're alive. Yeah. When we went through John 17, you know, Jesus prayed for protection from the evil one. Yep. Which to me should be our focus. I'm not going to allow this to send me down a road that's evil. Whatever that is, I I think it's a good prayer. I mean, to me, a better prayer, not a better prayer, but I think a more mature prayer is let's use this as an opportunity to get Jesus out there because it does remind people that we're perishable which is kind of our take on it. We, the reason we don't get bent out of shape like most people is because we think, well, what if I died from the flu? Well, the world's like, well, what are you talking about? I'm like, I, well, I have all it does is remind yeah. us that we're perishable. I have personally baptized way more people in the same time frame, inside the coronavirus time frame, we've baptized more than we ever have before. Correct. And, and during by, the pandemic, well, and, didn't Jesus and, and they're say, reaching more people than ever before. Well, didn't too. Jesus yeah. say, "Don't fear those who can kill the body, but fear the one that can kill the body and the soul." That is correct, and that's what I mean by protect us from the evil one. Well, I mean it may have come from the evil one. They may have had a, a simulated conversation like Job, and this affliction has come. But it does remind it. Nothing changed. We're perishable. Did you not know that? We we already knew that. But people get sick. Jesus said that. It's not the healthy that need the doctor, but the sick. He, he's fully aware that people get sick. And so, unfortunately, people die. Missy's grandma died yeah. from coronavirus. We just lost our, a cousin. We lost our cousin. So, so, so it inspires me. I think it's okay to pray, okay, in this. But guess what? There'll be something else. Because it's still revolving around the major factors. I think a great illustration, Jace, is a good friend of ours, Ron, who's a huge LSU fan, meets with us, one of our brothers. Um, during this year, he, of course, like everybody else, he's work, he's healthcare worker, so he's you know trying to not get coronavirus, but he finds out he has a brain tumor in the middle of all this stuff. Mm. And the conversation Ron and I had, <clears throat> initial conversation, I think is the right one to have. Of course I prayed that God would take this – affliction away from him. I mean, my first prayer was, you know, I want him to survive. He's a good brother. I love him. But then I, the next thing I, that he and I talked about and we prayed about was if he doesn't, if he decides the brain tumor is going to do you in. I, mean, I was just speaking really honest with Ryan. I said, then I want to pray that he gets a lot of glory out of you going through this and that people are helped because of your faith and what you believe. And so I think that's the way you have to measure. It's like, yeah. of course, the first prayer is take this away because we don't like pain. But the second prayer is if God says, no, you know, I'm just going to let you 
battle this thing because there's something better at the end of it, then I want to be ready for that and be praying yeah. that God gets glory out of my fight. I think and what, so I, that's yeah. what he's done. I mean, he's, he's, and I'm inspired by that because it's like yeah. he's in the fight of his life, you know? I think what causes us all these problems and where we have questions like this is because every time you watch a news show or hear the radio and when it comes to coronavirus, they say the same thing. Now go out there, be safe, wear your mask, mask up. And, you know, they don't say holler at people if they don't wear masks, but there's people out there doing that. <laughs> and, and they're making fun of people who don't wear a mask or who don't think it's that serious. They, they'll say, you know, get, take this serious. Practice social distancing. Uh, don't meet more yeah. than six on Yeah, Thanks. don't have all these. And, and so people say, well, you know, why aren't you taking this serious? And I'm like, well, because the biggest thing they're leaving out. To me, if they would just add, and look at this Jesus, because he actually can cure diseases, and even if you die, you can come back from the dead. So, <laughs> well, people say, well, fuck, well, we can't. That's the, we can't talk. Well, I take that, I take that more seriously than I do your list, and I'm going to follow the list as a citizen. The reason I it doesn't seem like I'm taking that as serious is because I have that one in Jesus <laughs> above those. That's right. I'm you like, too. okay, and that's why when something comes up like, well, we're not going to let you sing in California. Well, no, wait a minute, because you just took number one and said we can't do number one. We're going to put that down here under social distancing and no, I'm going to put that one right back up here. And I think that's where this big chasm is between people who don't believe and us, because to them, they're terrified because the you only live once. The, the only way. thing that's changed with me is five times, I mentioned last week in the Bible, it says, greet one another with a holy kiss. <laughs> You're still on, still on the kiss. And, and, and I said, <laughs> Phil, here's the problem. I, Nobody's going to kiss you anyway. I don't want to test God, and so I, but I don't fool with no mask and all this stuff. And then social distancing, well, I mean, how are okay. you going to baptize somebody if, if you don't have him by the nap of the neck? Because, Phil, there's not a person living within a half a mile of you at granted, any time. Granted, so, I had withdrawn somewhat before the virus. But somebody will hear that, and they're like, Phil's not social distant. Yeah, he, he's, old. Yeah. he's not wearing a mask. There's nobody here. No, he's not around people. <laughs> so the, I'll close with this, Jace. The By the way, what you just said at the end was perfect, because and the Supreme Court of the United States of America agrees with you and struck down Cuomo's deal about that you can't tell people yeah. not to meet. So yeah. the Supreme Court says just what you said, that that our number one fundamental right Jace, is Jace, do you realize that. how I'm close surprised. you are to being on the Supreme That's Court? That's right. So you were just right has there. Has that ever crossed your mind? Well, I know the one who is the Supreme <laughs> Supreme Because there are some Court. who's going to say your dogma sounds a little bit yeah. too Bible-y, jesus <laughs> The, you know, your the dogma. dogma speaks loudly in this one. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm I'm basing all this on being in line. I mean, I'm look, my mind's a million miles away. I'm in Austin, <laughs> one of the most liberal cities in the world. And look, I didn't realize that on the actual floor, they had round circles that say here, Stand safe. Here. Di you know, so I'm not six feet. I'm five and a half. I'm not in my circle. <laughs> And the cashier, which I've been having trouble with cashiers. Yeah, you're, you're, you're like a cashier convenience says, store. Sir, stand back. <laughs> you know, so I'm looking back like some idiot behind me is doing something. <laughs> uh, there's nobody behind me. So I'm like, oh, she's talking to me. She's like, stand back. I'm like, what? <laughs> Social distancing. And I was like, oh, there's circles on the floor. <laughs> they have them. Well, I chuckled. And, and you when, wonder why I don't go to town. Yeah. <laughs> so when I chuckled, because I'm I'm telling you, the reason I chuckled is one, I didn't know that was written on the floor. And two, I thought I'm five and a half instead of six. I'm going to heaven. <laughs> I have a mask on. <laughs> and I had the virus and, already. <laughs> and you're so upset about this. I can't help but laugh. It, <laughs> it, it caused me. And I could tell it burned her up that I laughed. Yes. Like, you're not taking this serious. And that's when it hit me. Yeah. What I just said, I thought, she doesn't get it. I'm trying to abide by these rules. But overall, 
I, I have a bigger picture than this. Sorry, I violated six inches of the six foot rule, and I didn't see this artwork on the floor. My bad. That's what I should have said, but I didn't want to say it like that. Chase is a convenience mine. store's nightmare. Thanks for listening to the Unashamed Podcast. Help us out by rating us on iTunes. And don't miss an episode by subscribing on YouTube and be sure to click that little bell to get notified about new episodes. And for even more content that you won't get anywhere else, subscribe to Blaze TV at blazetv.com slash unashamed.